Welcome to another episode of Consumer Protection and You with Ryan Lippy. Ryan is a consumer educator with the State of Ohio Attorney General's Office, Dave Yost. And he's going to be speaking about travel scams coming out of the pandemic. So stay tuned. Welcome back to another episode of Consumer Protection and You with Ryan Lippy. Ryan is a consumer educator with the State of Ohio Attorney General's Office, David Yost. Ryan, this is the season to be traveling, to be vacationing, to see the world. Well, it certainly is. And, you know, a lot of people weren't able to travel the last nine to 12 months. Um, at least. So it's been a while since people have hopped in a car to go to another state. It's been a long time since a lot of us have gone to the airport or the train station, maybe even longer since we stayed in a hotel or rented a car. So it's important with every one of those categories that you know some things, some precautions to take, um, considering we're coming out of the pandemic. What does the new normal look like? for those types of traveling. So it'll be interesting to see what things we should keep as consumers our eyes open to. Yeah, one thing you certainly need to know about is the mask requirements, if there are any, when you're traveling. There probably are mask requirements, um, especially at airports and other public transportation stations. So you wanna pay attention to not just where you're from, but where you're going and any place you're going to be in the interim, if you're stopping at an airport in a state that requires masks. But for the most part at this point, airports, train stations, bus depots are in fact requiring masks. But um, you also want to research your destination in terms of any closures or any altered hours of operation due to COVID, um, any restrictions put in place by the state or the locality. For example, some policies require COVID testing before you arrive. And if you're traveling internationally, and it's especially important to people traveling internationally, check travel alerts from the U.S. State Department and be aware that even U.S. citizens have to produce a negative test for COVID-19 to re-enter our country. So all those restrictions are not completely lifted off just because you may go to the grocery store in Columbus without wearing a mask doesn't mean you don't need to wear a mask in a foreign country. And just because your airport may not require a COVID test to go out doesn't mean you might not need one coming back into the country. So pay attention to all those um, different precautions. Look at the State Department website. Check with travel agents if you have any questions. It's always helpful if you use a travel agent to uh, give them some good questions to have answered before you go on a trip. Uh, we as uh, Americans um, like to feel that we are free to do whatever we want within reasons, of course. So let's just suppose I go to the airport, but I don't have a mask. And I, I know that they are requiring that. What can they really do? Well, they may give you a free mask. They may want you to buy a mask in a, in a store of some sort. But the important thing is if you don't have one, ask that question before you arrive without one. So you're not stuck having to literally go back home or back to your hotel simply because you don't have, you know, a dollar, $1 mask. So ask that question ahead of time. Be prepared. I guess that's the name of the game right now is just being prepared all around. And, you know, you don't need to be combative. We've heard way too many news stories over the last week or so about um, run ins with flight attendants and airport officials. Uh, be, be, you know, you get your best um, you get your best foot forward when you're polite and cautious and definitely asking polite questions and not raising a fuss will, will do you good in the, uh, in the long run. You won't get kicked off your flight. You'll get good customer service most of the time. And if you do have any problems, ask to talk to a supervisor politely. So should we also have our vaccination records that we have had our COVID-19 shot? 
Uh, you may want to take a photo of your vaccination card. I'm concerned if you bring the card, unless you know you need it, you may end up losing it while you travel. Yeah, yeah. But again, that's a question you need to ask your travel agent or the airline or consult the U.S. State Department if you're going internationally. Do you need your vaccination card? Most of us, at least the majority of us, are probably vaccinated at this point. Uh, some of us have both shots. Some of us got the Johnson & Johnson one shot. But um, regardless, that, uh, that vaccination card needs to be put somewhere safe. And you may, may need to get it out to show it for um, a particular travel stint or maybe to get a booster. We still don't know whether we're going to need to get booster shots. Sort of the presumption is at some point we all will. So... Uh, Keep, keep that vaccination card handy, but in a safe location. Take a photo of it, but in no means should you be putting it on social media or sharing it with those who don't need to see it because it may have personal identifying medical information on it that really only you and your doctor and a few close people need to know, to know about. If I've been vaccinated and I go to a place that requires a mask, can I just hold up my vaccination card and be mask free or well, do they you know, still require for the most part in ohio um there are stores that are requiring masks if you haven't been vaccinated but they're not actually checking and i'm assuming it may be that way in other states but in foreign countries you may need to have some kind of a scanned uh app on your smartphone that you've already plugged in with uh, vaccination information. Things can be quite different in other countries, and uh, you may have problems unless you are fully prepared. And when you're renting a car, uh, there is there has been some, um, I guess, instability in terms of renting cars and car sharing services. They may still be limited due to the pandemic. So book in advance. If you're renting a car, book in advance. Make sure you have everything secure. Call ahead of time to make sure they have a car for you. And consider your alternatives. Even if you have a reservation, consider what might need to take place as a plan B, because there have been shortages of rental cars in some destinations. Uh, so make sure you have all your research done, you have everything lined up, and then make doubly sure by calling in advance closer to your date to make sure it's available when when we travel somewhere we're we're really out of our zone we're really uh not a fully aware of of our surroundings if you want to call it that is that where we need to be uh very careful with scams well, you, you always have had to be a bit careful when you're in destinations that you don't know about or that, that are strange to you. Um, looking at maps, those telltale signs that you're a tourist um, may help if somebody uh, wants to help you looking for directions, but it, al it also can mean somebody is spotting you as uh, a potential pickpocket victim or something like that. In terms of scams, um, just be extra vigilant um, about your personal security. And before you go renting um, an, an apartment or one of those Airbnb rooms or, or uh, condominiums or something like that, be aware of some of those types of scams. There are folks that um, engage in vacation rental scams where scammers advertise properties that are actually not available to rent, but they'll tell you they are, and they usually offer below market rates, and they ask renters, potential renters, to send a deposit using a wire transfer or a money order service, and after renters send the money, they get nothing in return, and if uh, if you think it's strange or if you think it's frightening to be in your area and get scammed, imagine what it's like when you're in another state or a foreign country and uh, you're left to contact the police or uh, fend for yourself in uh, a strange environment. So I guess I would double up on uh, the um, skepticism about uh, potential travel deals, as well as personal protection when you're at hotels, when you're at airports, things like that. And speaking of hotels, um, find out how guests are being protected from the spread of COVID-19.
with your hotel, even though we're out of the woods, so to speak, with the uh, advent of the different vaccines, realize that some people aren't vaccinated. Some travel areas are worse than others in terms of still having a, uh, a, a lot of um, COVID uh, occurrences. So find out how guests are being protected from the spread of COVID and check with your hotel to understand its policies and make sure the services that you may have expected, like a continental breakfast buffet or regular room cleaning, make sure all that stuff is still offered. And if possible, look at reviews shared by recent travelers online. Uh, you may get a glimpse of what to expect in this new normal just from reading some reviews by people that have stayed there and experienced it, learned from other people's experiences. If they're surprised by something and report it online, you'll know to look for it and not be so surprised. So that those are some good tips in terms of your next hotel stay. Cruises are overgrown uh, boat motels. And one of the things that I, I've seen um, is a number of different videos on YouTube that caution individuals on some things to do, some things to expect, some things not to expect. Yeah, I mean, gone are the days where you can only go to a bookstore to get a travel guide. Uh, and by the way, feel free to go to your local library and look for a travel guide if you don't want to spend the money on one. But um, look at free videos. You know, a lot of the same travel, travel publishers that um, have done books in print also do electronic books and also do um, podcasts and online video travel guides on channels like YouTube. So um, do what you can for free is what I say. And uh, a lot of times you might be able to get um, some good tips for free. Uh, but with cruises, um, you know, many cruise lines as of today, which is June 2021, when we're recording this, um, a lot of cruises are still suspended in terms of sailing and uh, cruising customers should be sure to find out a cruise line's cancellation policy and what to expect on a voyage. And you want to be certain that you're prepared, that your expectations meet the reality of traveling during the ongoing pandemic. So with a cruise, you need to find if there's a company-wide uh, sailing policy right now in terms of whether they're doing anything cruise-wise, because a lot of them, even though they may legally be able to cruise, a lot of them are probably preparing their ships for the eventual return to cruising, but are not yet in that mode. So just be careful, especially with cruises, that your, that your cruise is even going to go off as expected, let alone any of the cleaning changes or anything you need to do in advance to prepare for cruises, wearing masks, things like that. Are buffets going to truly be buffets in today's uh, COVID pandemic kind of world? Uh, a lot of buffets have stopped. Some buffets are slowly opening up. Other buffets have altered their services where they have a server. So instead of you grabbing food and getting um, potential harmful um, bacteria into the food, they are actually just serving you and catering to you instead of you going through the line and catering for yourself. So lots of changes out there, especially with cruises. Some cruises are running. Uh, it's just that the United States has not yet allowed any of the cruise ships to port in the United yeah. States. But it appears that um, soon those bans, those restrictions will be over with. Oh, soon enough. Sure. With the vaccine getting in more and more places. Uh, but again, it may depend on where you're cruising to, where the stops are, where the stops may have changed due to COVID and, and precautions like that. And always find out, no matter what you do, find out the cancellation policy uh, before you pay. Um, find out if you're flying, for example, what is the cancellation policy and um, prepare accordingly also for food and beverage services. Will those or will those not be on your plane? 
Some airlines are slowly getting back into the mode of serving mixed drinks, serving soda, serving coffee. Some may still only have water, may not even have the peanuts available. Uh, so not only are uh, not only are the travel uh, carriers being very cost conscious as they've been in the last five or ten years about not serving full buffets or full meals to coach class. But now they have got COVID restrictions or COVID policies as well. So they may not have the meals that they might have otherwise had, even in the higher classes of service. So again, that's where your travel agent can be your friend. That's where videos online can be your friend, travel reviews, um, places like that. So really find a, um, find a bunch of platforms where you can embrace um, some of the um, tips out there. For, uh, for flying, for cruising, for hotels, for rentals, all those things may have changed. I know when I was up at uh, Put-In Bay a couple of weekends ago, uh, you had to be sure to wear your mask going over to the island. Uh, but once you got to the island, pretty much it was fairly relaxed. You saw some people in masks and many, many other people without masks on. But sure enough, when we, when we went back you know, onto the mainland, um, you know, most of Ottawa County that is um, in, uh, in the uh, main, main part of the United States, uh, you do wear masks. And so you, you really needed to be prepared for both environments. So when, when we're traveling, what, what are a couple of things uh, outside of the hotels uh, we, we should sort of uh, be aware of? Well, I mean, first of all, when you're booking, uh, make sure you do research and don't book necessarily just based on price alone. Read reviews by the Better Business Bureau, by consumers, by the attorney general's office. Search online using the company's name that you want to book through, along with words like reviews or complaints. And one thing to be sure about is always double check the phone number you're about to dial or link that you're about to click to make sure it'll go to the legitimate company that you're intending to do business with. Um, and it's especially important to verify websites before entering any credit cards or personal information. Travel scammers may create phony websites. They may uh, even um, have fraudulent customer support telephone numbers. So when you're going to one of those big travel companies or big hotel chains, uh, make sure you're dialing very carefully and make sure you're using legitimate sources to get the phone numbers and the links to websites. And that's true when you're at your destination as well. Um, when you're calling the front desk, when you're linking to find out your total on your bill, um, you know, when you're on free uh, hotel Wi-Fi, what to be uh, careful of there. You don't want to put in any um, any information, personal, private information on free hotel Wi-Fi's. Uh, I would be much, much care more careful than um, than uh, maybe a year or two ago about those types of scams. So just make sure that um, before you go on hotel Wi-Fi or air an airport Wi-Fi, know what to do and what not to do, and pretty much. The things that you cannot do involve uh, anything with passwords, anything with personal information, financial information. Those are no-nos on free public Wi-Fi. Technically, you can do all those things, but um, rationally and from, an, from a um, good consumer advocate point of view, you need to be very, very careful when you're on free public Wi-Fi about any personal information you might be giving up to people that might be infiltrating that, uh, that uh, computer network. When we do travel, if we go to, let's say, Canada, Mexico, or the European or wherever, um, we have to be very, very careful about the internet services on their side, on sure. their country. Um, I, I know that with the, uh, if you are roaming on your iPhone and you go up to another country, et cetera, you might find that you're going to get a very large bill because we haven't checked that. And I, right. I'm sure you've, you as a consumer educator have seen that to where people are, are shocked. Yeah, hey, I've got a $3,000 bill. 
Right, right. I mean, um, you know, when, just because you go to another country and you're able to call that other country from the United States doesn't mean your phone's necessarily going to work when you hit the ground in that other country. Or again, at what price will that phone work? So um, do your due diligence. Call your carrier if you have questions. Find out whether you have to um, get a new SIM card, whether you have any loss of phone service, whether your text messaging will work and at what price, whether your data service will work, and at what price, is it included in your plan or not? Um, and also, just with um, whatever you do, whatever you buy, whatever you are, are doing, uh, make sure you get all promises in writing, keep your receipts, um, keep tabs on your credit card statements, uh, don't pay for anything you haven't authorized, and um, you know, even smaller things like knowing whether your credit card has a foreign transaction fee when you go to another country, or um, whether you have to pay different taxes when you go to another country. Um, those are really, really important, and you may not know about those things until you ask the question and find out the details. So I, be I, careful I think... and, and ask, ask, ask before you go. I, I, I think that's very, very wise especially if you're going out of the country to make sure that you've uh, had a conversation with the credit card company that you're going to be using because there are hidden fees and there are extra charges on certain cards. And um, if we assume that they're, that the card is legitimate, um, there can be a lot of problems. Well, and then um, giving a credit card company a heads up is always a good idea if you are traveling to another state or another country, um, even if it's for a short period of time, uh, give them a heads up. Um, some credit card companies say you don't need to do that. Others recommend it. So um, call your credit card company while you're on the phone. Ask if there's a foreign transaction fee. Ask about um, any questions you may have for your bank or your credit card company about using ATMs and the availability of ATMs. And, um, you know, just find out um, what you what they need to know from you in terms of your travel schedule. I, I know that when my family went to Canada recently, uh, there are certain kinds of charges that we assume we would pay with money, but is not necessarily the case. When we parked at a, a municipal parking garage, we were told you have to use a credit card or a debit card uh, to begin and to end. Yeah. And I, I found that interesting. You know, here I had a, a pocket full of uh, dollar bills and, you know, that sort of makes sense. Yeah, and make sure you know the, the general customs of the area in terms of tipping policies and whether tips or gratuities are included in um, the uh, amount that you're paying in the bill. Um, countries are very, very different and divergent on um, tipping customs. So you certainly want to uh, tip the serve, tip for good service um, in countries where tipping is customary and uh, where it's not, you know, it's up, it's up to you. But um, in, in many cases, you may be surprised at what you hear about when you investigate uh, the customary policies for tipping in foreign countries. What are some really good tips you'd like to emphasize when we begin our traveling plans? Uh, just ask lots of questions and, and things that you're assuming, double check to make sure. Um, I know my girlfriend always reminds me to double check hotel and ticket reservations and things before I hit the road so that we are awfully precautious to make sure there's rooms available, what time is check-in, what time is check-out. And just remember, things may have changed and may not be accurate even on the website. Uh, because of COVID, some people or some hotels and, and, uh, and destinations have changed policies uh, even overnight. So just be, uh, be prepared for changes. Have a plan B. Ask questions. Write things down so you remember them. Bring, uh, bring maps with you in case your GPS fails. Um, always have a backup plan and find out um, 
You know, make sure any verbal promises are put in writing. Uh, credit card is going to be your safest method of payment in many places because that is um, at least uh, reversible by the credit card company if somebody uses the credit card without your permission or, um, you know, charges $1,000 when the price was $100. Uh, keep a keep copy of all your receipts, um, verify your reservations, especially if you're going through a third party and consumers who suspect a scam or who have problems they can't resolve on their own can certainly contact the Ohio Attorney General's office at uh, www.ohioprotects.org. That's ohioprotects.org or 800 800- Two eight two zero five one five. I remember just a quick example. Um, there were some bus trips that were canceled several years ago in a lot of schools. Um, I believe oh, that yeah. was up in northern Ohio, and uh, well, actually throughout Ohio. But some some bus companies canceled trips and really pulled the rug out from a lot of students that were hoping to visit D.C. with their school class trip. So schools were left in a bind. Parents were left in a bind. Students were left in a bind. And we ended up being able to resolve a lot of those cases where um, someone just simply failed to honor their end of the obligation in terms of getting that bus running to DC for some of these students. There were an awful lot of complaints and angry parents and schools about that. And we were able to really get involved and help on the ground for uh, getting refunds where they were necessary. And schools may have been able to line up plan B or alternative arrangements for transportation. But um, that was just an example of where we might be able to step in and be very helpful to people that are in a bind. Hmm. Uh, that makes uh, a lot of sense. Uh, and again, uh, to contact you, the phone number is? 800-282-0515. Again, that's 800-282-0515. Or we even have chat available online. If you'd rather chat with someone in real time, at least during the general business day, we do have constituent services folks that are monitoring our chat application through the website uh, ohioprotects.org or ohioattorneygeneral.gov. Now, should they ask for you or can whoever answers the phone? No, we actually have a help center with constituent services representatives that will be at the ready to help them. So if they call me, I usually will refer them to our help center because that's the centralized location. And that's where you need to call through that toll free number that goes right to the help center. And um, you can communicate with our office electronically as well through our website and through our chat room. Hey, we're talking with Ryan Lippy. He's a consumer educator with the state of Ohio Attorney General's office, Dave Yost. Ryan, thank you. And I look forward to our next session. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Patrick.